Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm uh, I'm off from work now. Usually, I have these sessions in the park on Sunday, but for whatever reason, uh, you know, I took an Uber ride back home, and it's a little later than usual. It's like about one o'clock out here in Mountain Time, of course, and uh. Normally I'd be in the bed, or I'd be in the sauna, my home sauna that is. But you know, I bought these uh, Dutch Master cigars, and uh, yeah, I thought I'd just you know try one, and um, you know, in the meanwhile discuss the you know the buffoonery of the weekend, as well as um, the evidence that. Uh, Kevin Samuels was putting out there as far as you know winter coming but first uh, y'all give me a second so I can go on like the sick so uh, I know I should have did that shit but uh, let me uh y'all bear with me just just give me a minute Now, <clears throat> to um, address that little situation last week concerning the, uh, you know, the eBay scam, y'all gonna have to forgive me, I'm puffing on this, um, this Dutch Masters sick. <clears throat> It won't be too long before I get a couple of Cubans. Because, you know, like I said, I live um, in the proximity of some Russian-owned businesses. And, you know, they they practically got a cigar shop. So, you know, that'll probably be later on for the winter or whatnot. Yeah, these are a little different from your black and mild, because, you know, those light up pretty quick. But, uh, so, eBay, uh, acknowledged that my account was indeed hacked into. It was compromised, as they said. So, they basically, you know, diverted that they um, reached was that oh, excuse me hold on <coughs> the verdict that they reached was basically that I wasn't in the wrong of anything and that um, both these buyers of these bullshit of these bullshit purchases that they made would be refunded by them and that my account would continue to be in good standing but for whatever reason whenever I get on the website and I go to payments it's still saying that um, there's some money that I owe like and it ain't it ain't a substantial amount it ain't nearly as much as it was you know this past week cuz like I said I removed my um my uh debit card info for them because i wasn't gonna have these motherfuckers hack into my or you know take well, i can't even say hack into my account but take money out of my account and then have me in the red have me paying for anything that i you know i had absolutely nothing to do with 
So in the meanwhile, I've just been dwelling on what the fuck that's supposed to be about. But, you know, in the meanwhile, I'm not going to do shit. Hopefully it'll dissolve. Because like I said, like I said, they absolved me of all wrong. Because I had nothing to do with this shit. Some asshole hacked into my account. Sold some bogus shit to some unsuspecting customers. And I spent the last week or so going through this process of letting eBay know and letting the scammers know. You know, these so-called customer service support motherfuckers. These, uh, these damn, like, them damn Hindu motherfuckers who, who clearly got their shit locked, stocked, and barreled. That I didn't have nothing to do with any of that bullshit. scam my ass out of four hundred dollars literally told me some shit that now I know you're not supposed to do you're not supposed to use any kind of gift cards as payments but to an unsuspecting motherfucker such as myself at the time you wouldn't have known I wouldn't have known that and surely enough only after the fact that I fall victim to some sucker shit like that do I see all these postings that you don't use gift cards as um, payments? And anyone telling you to do so is scamming you. I'm telling you, bro. This fucking society. This society, you know, Lion of MGTOW talk, often talks about snares and traps. I'm here to tell you, this fucking society is a snare and a fucking trap. I mean, look at it. The shit that we know as far as like the red pill and MGTOW. The shit that we know as far as female nature. Now that we understand female nature. What element is there in society? In the immediate society? Is telling us about this stuff. These motherfuckers burn fast. They ain't all that good, but you know, coming from something like Dutch Masters, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't also, it probably wouldn't surprise me if, come to find out, Dutch Masters has a bad reputation. It's probably known for some bad stigma. Watch me find, watch me find out. What I gather, it says they've been one of America's favorite machine-made cigars since 1911. And it says something to an extent of a characteristically smooth, mellow flavor and pleasing aroma. A great inexpensive smoke at a very reasonable price. And whatever. But anyway... In addition to the, all that bullshit, uh, two days ago when I got paid again, it was time for me to uh, renew my service on my phone. And so uh, I got one of those uh, simple mobile cards. Because that's what I use. That's what my phone, you know, has its plan with. Simple mobile. And I guess because I use my old, and I do mean my old uh, Kroger Plus card info. Like this old number that we used to have back when, I mean, long ass time ago. When my family, like when me, my brother, like my whole family were living together. I mean, um, in other words, basically back in the 90s.
well something happened among that because usually and I do have a Kroger Plus card it's just that you know sometimes I don't feel like pulling it out so I'll just you know input this old information and lately I mean you know the past three years that I've been here it's been working but for some odd reason it it fucked up it fucked up this card that I had and so <clears throat> also like the fact that these don't these don't burn nearly as much I wonder what's up with that and the, you know as far as the difference between this and black and mouse black and mouse be burning the niggas mouth you know, I don't know these but and these are fatter so can't make sense of that but anyway uh so I go back home and in the meanwhile there's another strag and it's August now and the thing about it is I think I told y'all that I was in a situation where I had to defend myself because basically one of these strags out here uh, basically held a nigga at knife point and the nigga had to jump on her ass that was last year August of last year so I'm looking at this shit I'm assessing the situation like you mean to tell me one whole year after last year's bullshit ensued we got another strag coming around the premises because I don't know what it is about this group home that attracts these Sesame Street ass Muppet ass People who are just, I mean, just fucked up. All fucked up. I'm talking about motherfuckers. Motherfuckers that if you came up in a two-parent household like I did, these are the very same motherfuckers that your parents told you that you should never find yourself in any kind of position being. Junky motherfuckers. And it's funny I say that because I remember, and I know why I said this shit. I remember when I was in, um, I haven't forgotten what, I'm just, I'm just running on a tangent right now. And I'll get back to the phone situation. But I remember when I was in um, preschool, we gathered in a circle and we were basically, you know, asked of the teacher what do we want to be when we grow up and you know a career field has always been a difficult choice for me because I innately seem to understand that jobs suck the vast majority of jobs that are out here just fucking suck it sucks to be a fireman it sucks to be a police officer it sucks to be a, a, a fucking construction worker jobs suck that's just it sucks to be a restaurant worker, a restaurant manager. Jobs just fucking suck. But because of this commercial that I saw, I actually said, I actually said, I want to be a junkie when I grow up. And as you can imagine, the whole class got to laughing. They was dying laughing. And I, the reason why I said that is because I had no idea what a junkie is. And it comes from, I don't know if y'all remember this commercial. I bet y'all tripping too. <clears throat> but it, it was from a commercial from a long time ago, definitely back in the 90s, where you hear a kid saying, I want to be something something when I grow up. I think he probably said, I want to be a firefighter when I grow up. And then you can hear, after that, you hear a teenage voice. And in the background, you see this teenage kid running away from this cop while the cop is running up to him and nabbing his ass. And you hear this teen's voice saying, nobody says I want to be a junkie when I grow up. <laughs> the thing is, I was like four or five years old, so I didn't even know what a junkie was. And that's why I said that shit. And of course, I was corrected on it and, you know. Later on, I said, oh, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a policeman. Careers that I actually did look into and damn near delved into. Like, I fucked with, I delved, I damn near delved into uh, the Memphis Police Department. 
I went after them motherfuckers first. And I came this close. I came very close to becoming a goddamn MPD cop. Probably would have been the dumbest decision of my life. And shortly after that, when I uh, considered it, I damn near came close to being a, a, a firefighter for the Memphis Fire Department. And I honestly don't know which would have been worse. The firefighter, but I worked at AutoZone and the, uh, the firefighter actually told me that he was actually trying to, I mean, for whatever reason, he was trying to tell me you need to uh, join the police. And I was like, don't you think y'all's job is safer? And he up here looking at me like I'm crazy going, man, do you see police going into a burning building? And I'm like, no, but they get shot. I was like, don't they get shot at? And he was like, man, cops don't get shot at, which is true to an, to an extent, to an extent. It's very unlikely, at least in Memphis, that you're going to have these hardened criminals trying to shoot at cops. As much as them niggas run and gun on each other, it's very, very rare and unlikely. So they say, so they say, because there might be a MPD or former MPD officer telling me, nigga, bullshit. They just don't put it on the news. Motherfucking cops be getting blasted at all the time. Got to chase like, hardened criminals and all this shit. That's what I was like. I'd rather just be a fire, a fireman or a firefighter. But, um, so I come out here and like I said, with the amount of drugs, the amount of like all these drugs that would be illegal in other places and would be, you would think would be illegal out here. And I'm not just talking about weed. I'm talking about hard drugs that are apparently legal out here. So you got a whole city, even with its affluence, even with its resources littered with junkies junkie motherfuckers most of whom are homeless and that's some self-inflicted shit because it ain't like these motherfuckers can't find work out here but um back to the phone situation because and the reason why i brought that up is because there was one of these junkie broads Again, lingering around the house for reasons that we don't know. We don't know who this bitch was. But apparently she knew one of the tenants and that was one of his strags. But she's lingering around the house, around the premises. So I'm ducking and dodging her just for the sake of avoiding conflict all the while trying to figure out this phone shit situation this situation with the phone and shit now as I normally do I scratch the back of the card call it the 1-800 number to reamp my ser to reamp my service <clears throat> to renew my service this thing says it's invalid so I go back to customer service and I'm asking this worthless bitch if I can get my shit swapped out. Mind you now, I don't want my money back. Not the first time anywhere. I don't want my money back. I just wanted another card to get swapped out. And she was like, there's nothing I can do. And I'm like, what do you mean there's nothing I can... And it's like I had to pry it out of her. And it was a strag, of course, to, for her to at least tell me that I need to call the 1-800 number at the bottom of the receipt. Because, mind you, I had the receipt. And she brings her manager. Well, I asked for the manager. She comes over and basically tells me the same thing. There's nothing we can do. But I just, mind you now, I just paid $40 for this damn uh, phone card to reamp my service and the motherfucker's not working so I go back home because you know I'm just across the street from this uh, King Supers or you know Kroger so I call the 1-800 number and I'm giving them the details of the receipt the four last 
numbers of the receipt, the time of the receipt, the other items that I bought with alongside the uh, gift card, like the trash bags and um, the box of Dutch Masters and the two black and milds. I'm going into specifics like that. And they tell me that I need to go back and tell them that they need to call them so that they can confirm this shit. And sh and, but this time, this time, it wasn't these two strags. It was a dude and it was a male manager. See, this solidifies everything that, would, that we say about MGTOW, what I'm getting ready to tell y'all. Because I explained my situation to them. Because, oh yeah, I forgot to tell y'all, but I, I got another phone card and I bought it. Um, I used my, uh, my debit card for that. So now I'm coming back with the original uh, card, the first card that didn't go through. Now I want my money back. I want my money back now because I didn't pay for two cards, one of which ain't working. What good is a card that ain't even working? I can't even use that so that I can have two months of service. So I might as well get my money back. I'm like, I want my money back now. And surely enough, once uh, I let him in on the situation and he tells his manager and, you know, his manager wasn't really sure about what it was I wanted. He was just like, just swap out the gift card. I was like, I don't want the gift card. I already paid for one. I want my money back. This dude, surely enough, opens up the cash register and gives me my $40 back. And I, I told him, I appreciate that, you know, all of this. And I told him how all of this could have been avoided. All this bullshit could have been avoided the first time. When I wasn't asking for no money back. When all I wanted was to have my uh, the phone card swapped out for another one. So that I can activate my service. Because I had to buy another gift card just so that I could activate my service just so that I could call the 1-800 number and tell them about the other bogus card that wasn't working and like I said it was probably because I used the very old um, Kroger uh, like I said that old 901 phone number that we used to uh, that used to be our phone number back in the 90s <laughs> back when we didn't have cell phones And Kroger was still taking it and honoring it. But not this time. <clears throat> I'm telling you, bro. And as I'm making my way back, the strag is still out there. And see, the difference between the strag of yesterday or a few days prior and yesteryear is that this strag was white the other strag was black the one who attacked me was a black woman or a black bitch i ain't gonna call it a woman that was like no that was that was a that was a nigger bitch but um uh, the thing about it was is that i come back like after that after all that buffoonery, I make my way off to my regular errands, which is going to the gym, working out there. And as I'm making my way back to the gym, well, yeah, from the gym and getting ready for work, I see her still there and she's breaking down crying. Because, and the thing about it is, is that because of the buffoonery, because of the bullshit that happened last year, I saw, I took this bitch as a threat because, like I said, she was yelling, she was shouting. Like, because apparently she knows one of the tenants. You know, that crackhead ass nigga. That, that was just one of his strikes. You know, it, it's amazing. It never, it never fails. With all the racism, with all the tribalism, the kind of bottom shelf Beckys who come our motherfucking way make I mean make just like make this planet make sense bro it, 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 you can't make this stuff up but what I want to point out 
and I hate that you know it take it took me this time to get to this talking point is that this is the evidence this right here and it was it was hard to watch that it was hard to witness that because I went because because of the bullshit that happened last year I saw her as a threat that's why I called the cops on her and I don't even know whether or not the cops showed up they showed up today you know when I was getting on the bus and I'm like I hope these motherfuckers ain't here just now I really hope these motherfuckers ain't here just now due to the phone call due to the 911 call that I made yesterday so I don't know what the fuck that was about all I know is you know Denver PD rolled up at the spot you know but by that time I was already you know making my way on the bus making my way to work uh, yesterday but my point is this is the concrete evidence of what Kevin Samuels was saying when he said winter is coming and a lot of you bitches just ain't ready for that shit Because I'll tell you, life has thrown some some bullshit bullshit my way. It has. It really has. The more I reflect back and look back in life, the more I look at, you know, there was some that really chaffed my ass today. And I ain't gonna lie, I felt a little low-key, I felt a little low-key envious. I ain't even gonna bullshit y'all. Because today was the last day of, um... The city's opening up their pools. Today was the last day. Or yesterday was the last day. So we basically got a whole month. You know. Out here dealing with this hot ass sun. And you know. I got membership at a gym that does have an indoor pool. But you know. Who wants to swim in an indoor pool? I swam in that shit last year. I was pissed off that. You know. Because of. You know. The pandemic hit. You know. City. You know. Everything. Like city pools and all that shit was shut the fuck down hated that shit and you know this electric gardens but that shit is expensive than a motherfucker I might I might one day at least one day try to go over there and you know do um cause I do like the fact that electric gardens out here they have this uh I, I, I think I've said this in my one of my videos that Elitch out here in Denver they have this um they have this uh mechanical whirlpool or well, not even whirlpool they have like this uh huge beach looking type pool that has mechanical waves and I like that shit because like me being the ex Memphian that I am you know for all my Memphians out there y'all probably remember back in the nineties there was this uh this water park called Adventure River and this is, like I said, this is nothing more than a poor demonstration of what Adventure River was. Because Adventure River had way more than just this pool with mechanical waves. But, you know, it takes, I mean, it's just for, you know, old time's sake. It's like it, you know, brings back that nostalgia where, you know, you just remember, you know, a long time ago when I was like 8, 9, maybe even 10 years old. You know, um, you know, they even do the thing where, you know, they have that loud buzzer. And then as soon as that buzzer goes off, you start hearing those waves generating. So I might, I might try to, uh, you know, save up some money and, you know, just to probably have to do that shit quick. Because like I said, fall, that transition from summer to fall and really winter is quick, quick. It's, it's like as soon as September come here bruh and by the time it's October we are already looking at blizzard weather out here or damn near blizzard weather bruh, it's nothing like my southern ass it, it's like it's nothing my southern ass has ever seen back in the mid south but uh this is the prime proof this right here it's like it's it's so ironic because it was just about a week or two ago that I saw that I saw that um, video, and this was around the time that the um, the rent moratoriums were starting to um, 
to be lifted. So, and it's like already with my lying eyes, already with me doing my daily routines of, you know, my predictable daily routines of going here, going there, going to the store, going to the swimming pool like uh, I've been doing, you know, up until today. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you all about. Uh, let me tell you about why I've been a little or I felt a, I felt some type of way. So there was this chick who was there. And I really didn't know. I really wasn't sure of my uh, stance with her or where I stood with her. And, you know, but I, I low-key speculated that there might have been some sort of attraction. And there were these two ladies that, you know, I'd been dialoguing with about, you know, as far as my business and whatnot. That, you know, I was wondering. And, if, and you know, I was telling them if it was... Uh, I was telling them uh, if it's awkward to hit on the lifeguard because I low-key wanted to shoot my shot. I ain't even going to lie. I ain't going to lie to y'all about, you know, when there's a female and, you know, I'm feeling some type of way from her, you know, because, you know, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at She's clearly of Southeast Asian descent and she a little thick and I'm like, hey, she has some, you know, you know. I'm sure it happened, and like they said, I'm sure it happens all the time. But the thing is, is like I was telling them, I don't want to be the 77th dude in line who's hit on this girl because they probably, like they said, lifeguard, female lifeguards probably get hit on all the time. And I'm like, I don't want to be that dude. That's why when I do hit on females, I try to put something out there to let them know that I'm not your average Joe Blow who's out here just trying to get getting uh getting your sweet watery guts. I got something to offer other unlike the other niggas. Just off the strength that I'm a producer. Just off off the strength that I've actually done something in life. So uh as she's making her way to her post and you know I'm pointing I'm pointing her out to the uh two ladies and I'm telling her, yeah, that's her. And they, they were like, yeah, she's 18. And I was like, yeah, I figured she was pretty young. And 18, that's too much. That's probably, it ain't to say that I wouldn't smash an 18-year-old. Because really, I mean, truth be told, like, I don't date, like, I ain't even trying to date. I was like, I was, I was, be honest, I was really just trying to smash. I was just trying to hit it and quit it. Like, I'd probably hit that shit like five times. I'm like, bitch, get the fuck out of my face afterwards. But they revealed to me that she's actually, you know, pretty damn smart because she's um, apparently supposed to be going to um, UC Berkeley. And those of you who know, UC Berkeley is is pretty much a, uh, it's pretty much a private school. I mean, not a private school. It's pretty much an Ivy League school pretty much <laughs> <coughs> and you know I it kind of had me it kind of set me back because I was like bro I haven't even with me studying and me making up for so many years of bullshit that I had to go through in my city as far as my miseducation I'm like, I wasn't even put in a position at her age to be going to a damn UC Berkeley, Pepperdine, given the cards that I was given, I consider myself lucky that I managed to uh, matriculate and graduate from the University of Memphis, aka the University of the Ghetto. where I was awarded degrees in Spanish, German, and Japanese. So you would think I would have been salty about the fact that uh, that I was looking at a very fat chance of, you know, hollering at which I didn't even bother because I was like, nah. And she about to go to Berkeley? And she young as a motherfucker? 
I was actually salty about the fact because of the cards that have been given to me. But, and you know, I, I really think that's, that's fucked up. That life has just had, like, that's why I'm going back to my talking points as far as life, sh you know, definitely going out of its way to shovel its share of shit towards me. Which is why I do st set the bar as high as I do. Because with any ounce of luck, I'll be able to, um, my plan, get matriculated at the uh, University of Colorado at Denver. Graduate with my STEM degrees. Go back to, um, you know, get my master's in, um, what was it, bioengineering, and what was the other one, uh, comp science, uh, which would probably be, yeah, cybersecurity, make my way to Germany, and go from there, so, like, a place like the University of Berlin, and that would be my, uh, Ivy League experience, not only from an Ivy League school, but a European Ivy League school. in Germany. I mean, a highly esteemed, you know, a highly esteemed institute from a highly esteemed country. Unlike, you know, somewhere like the University of Salamanca. <laughs> you know, it's it's a highly esteemed school, but it's not really, but Spain ain't really a highly esteemed country. <laughs> so, I, I ain't really, I ain't really tripping off the uh, university. <laughs> I ain't really tripping on the University of Salamanca like that. <laughs> but my point is, uh, even with all that bullshit that has been thrown my way, like I said, I spent a lifetime fighting this bullshit. And I'm looking at the, uh, in the meanwhile, I'm looking at these goofy ass Denverites. Some of them, because not all of them, clearly not all of them are like that, of course not. But, you know, I'm looking at the situation with the phone, with them bitches who were, compl you know, who just went out of their way to show just how worthless they are. As if they were trying to make a point that, nigga, I ain't shit. I ain't finna give you, I ain't finna swap out no car. And you, and you juxtapose that, you contrast that to the dudes who weren't tripping because like I said I had my receipt and dude just ended up refunding me my money because like I said I had bought two um, phone cards two simple mobile cards and one of them wasn't working so I'm like I need my money back now shit and and the uh, the strag of this year who was on the premises and we don't know who the fuck she is or what the, what the why the fuck she's here because I actually saw her about a week ago. And she asked me for my phone. Or she asked to borrow my phone. I'm like, I ain't giving you my phone. I ain't got no phone for you. What the fuck? And you, and in addition to the scam. In addition to the scam that I was involved in. Involuntarily involved in. Didn't have nothing to do with that shit. Some hackers hacked into my account. And tried to make me out to be the scapegoat of some Ponzi scheme where I'm up here selling some motherfuckers ironically from New York one of them was from New York from based on the information that I saw up here trying to sell them a, a Brooklyn Bridge this is concrete evidence of what Kevin Samuels was talking about in that um, and not just Kevin Samuels people been talking about this with the rent moratoriums being lifted with niggas walking away from the table and I like I said by niggas I don't mean just black men I mean men in general motherfuckers walking away from the table not stepping to females like that this is the this is the concrete evidence because say what you will about me I'm a man of results 
I'm a man of receipts. I'm a man of receipts. The things that I say, I got receipts to back that shit up. I don't just be up here whistling Dixie and spilling nearly willy. Spewing bullshit. And society goes out of its way to make motherfuckers like me look like we crazy or some shit. Like we don't like we don't see what we see. I'm here to tell you hard-headed bitches. A hard head makes a soft ass. Because that was very hard to watch. Her breaking down crying like that. That was not easy to watch. Because, and I felt, I felt it as I was making my way back. And I'm seeing her, you know, with her stuff out. She had like a, uh, like a suitcase and some other things. She had a teddy bear. That wasn't easy to watch. You know, I'm not so much of it as much as y'all try to make me out to be an asshole. I mean, but for my own survival, I'm going to have to be an asshole. Because given the kind of cards that have been given to me here in Mystery Babylon, do you honestly think that you're going to be able to pull on my heartstrings? I'm like, you put it. I'm like the way the way I see it, the way I see it, I have been molded into being an asshole. So I'm like, you know what? Just be the asshole. Because I promise you, bruh, no good deed goes unpunished. You are not going to win this. There may have been a time. There may have been a time that I would have fallen prey to the crocodile tears. There may have been a time. Because men instinctively fall prey to a female in distress and she breaking down crying and shit we don't like seeing bitches crying we we really get on some captain save a hoe type energy when we see that type of shit Let me piggyback on my talking points a couple of videos um, before. The one where I was like, um, what, what was that? Uh, let me go to this video. Let me go to my, my YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, why are you looking for the very men you set out to destroy? That video. Um, and like I said in that channel, I said that bitches like you motherfuckers, you feminazi bitches, you bitches who go out of your way to make a nigga's life that much harder, bitches like those strags at the uh, customer service aisle who could have easily just swapped out You ain't you ain't doing these other bitches who are out here struggling no kind of favors. Cuz there just might like I said, there just might be you know with the evidence surrounding us with the evidence that I just provided you with the rent moratoriums being lifted, there just may be some females out here hurting for a dude. And you think you bitches are actually doing something by making a nigga's life hard. Because <clears throat> these were some black bitches. <laughs> Which, it, it don't surprise me, knowing what I know about this American black bitch. That shit does not surprise me. 
I'm just here to say you fucking it up for the females who actually are genuinely looking for and they probably looking like they ain't never look they probably looking for a nigga like they never looked for a nigga before and we in a time where men have finally threw in the towel and like I said and I said it in the last video I'm gonna say it here I always low-key knew that there was, there was gonna be a time and with like I said with the rise of the Me Too movement with what happened with Bill Cosby false rape allegations You're, you're getting what you're doing is you're literally getting rid of the very guise of protection the very guise of protection that has been that has been the protection since there was a man and woman I mean back in the stone age you're getting rid of the very thing that for the past the past mill I was gonna say millennia or millenni millennia however you pluralize millennia oh yeah it is millennia because millennium is singular millennia is plural but for millennia for millions of years you're getting rid of the very source you're pushing away the very source you're devaluing the very source that for millions of years has been in place to take care of your ass, to take care of your dysfunctional, illogical, emotional, non-critical thinking skills having ass. No critical thinking skills have an ass. And I, I mean, I, I, I go back to my original talking points. What y'all gonna do? I did that video shortly. That was a week before I saw this shit. And you fast forward some week or two weeks later. And surely enough, I'm seeing concrete evidence as far as what Kevin Samuels was saying, as far as what Lionel MGTOW has been saying, as far as what I've been saying. Because like I said, we deal with facts over here. We deal with the bare necessities, the nitty gritty of life over here. And I'm here to tell you, you fucking up. You fucking up. And not only are you fucking up, uh, not only are you fucking up, you're fucking up for yourselves. If it's anybody who's going, <clears throat> if it's anybody who's going to be affected by this, it's going to be you. And a motherfucker like me who's basically crapped out and burned out, I'm like, oh, shit, good luck when, when the barn is closed, because... Cause that that for a lot of us we just we just decided to close the gate. <laughs> yeah, Coach Greg. It it kind of reminds yeah, Coach Greg Adams basically said the same thing about like the gate is closed. We don't know what y'all gonna do. Y'all have been using this socialist system of Section Eight welfare housing of using baby daddies to uh. To collect child support payments. Uh, Darius M. just did a video showing some strag, a white strag at that. Um, talking about how she got six baby, she got six kids from six different baby daddies and collects child support from all of them. And, you know, from that alone, her shit be like $2,000. <clears throat> Oh, I saw some, I saw some shit, uh, flashing this, yeah, ambulance, paramedic truck. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm I'm just here 
I'm just here to provide uh, concrete evidence as far as what I've been speaking on. And I honestly didn't think that it was going to come to, I genuinely didn't think that it was going to come to a viewer near me or come to a theater. I mean, I said a viewer. That was a Freudian slip. I meant to say come to a live theater near me where my lying eyes would witness what I witnessed. And less within a less than a week, less than two weeks, here I'm seeing here I'm seeing the receipts, the invoices, the receipts and the invoices of like I said, of what Kevin Samuels has been saying, of what Lionel Mixow has been saying, of what Coach Greg Adams has been saying. And even though my word even though my word ain't clearly ain't worth worth deadly what I've been saying. Negative birth rates all throughout the world. All throughout the world. Herbivore men. The concept of the herbivore men. Reaching places beyond Japan where it originated. MGTOW spreading like wildfire. Men closing their wallets. Men no longer dating. Wedding stores closing down. Floral stores closing down. Baby stores closing down like babies are us. Because they ain't getting no sales. You, you did that. I'm here to tell you. You bitches did that. You created that. It kind of reminds me of, uh, it kind of reminds me of, uh, straight out of Compton where, uh, Easy E's talking to that, uh, what's that snake he was with? The, the Jew boy who was, you know, trying to, and, you know, Easy E is pointing out, like, he's pointing out how, you know, this nigga been fucking him out of his own money. And he's up here trying to, you know, save face, talking about, you did this, you did this, you, and Easy was like, no, you did. You did this. And then he basically said, you're fired. You're fired, yeah, Jerry. You're fired, Jerry. So, a lot of y'all, we know for a fact accountability is just not a trait of the female we know that so for those of us who've had more than enough experience with females and female fuckery it's not going to come as a surprise if we're walking away from the table and we just see random strags up here you know uh making victims of themselves like they do blaming men as they do doing all this shit doing all this shaming and blaming talking about it's men's fault that we're in we're facing the conditions that we're facing and as in the words of easy -E to his former manager jerry i'm like no you did you did this you created this mess you made you single-handedly are responsible for the me too movement you single-handedly are responsible for this corrupt, this corrupt ass uh, fourth wave of feminism that has enabled you to, you know, show your true nature, which is, you know, like I said, you look on places, things like TikTok and Instagram, which is just pure whoredom. And you're looking for a pet wallet after the fact. And I'm here to tell you, the only men who are going to fall for the trick or are going to fall for the trap are blue pill simps. And I'm here to tell you that as long as I'm around, as long as a man like me is in the vicinity of somebody who would be a blue pill simp. And they have, you know, and they take a listen to me. I'm going to be there to prevent them from falling for the trap. And since you bitches love playing hard to get, since y'all loved, y'all relished in the years of hard to get, 
I'm going to set out to make sure that these these beta male providers these producers who once upon a time you was under the guise of their protection are going to be hard to get hard to acquire because I'm going to inform them of the red pill I'm going to inform them of stop being a captain saver host stop being a simp because let's just face it you bitches had this coming I mean, this is nothing more than, you know, what goes around comes around, you know, reaping what you sow, if you will. For every, I mean, what's, what's the, uh, what's the second, what's uh, Newton's second law? What's Newton's second law? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Something to that effect. <clears throat> so yeah. And I'm here to provide that, you know, that's clear. And it wouldn't surprise me. It, not that I'm out here looking for it, because like I said, it come you don't have to come looking for it. It will find you. And I was just thinking, I could have been a whole dog. I could have been on some dog shit. I could have take taken advantage of her. Like I said, with me being as horny as I am. And see, this is the thing. This is another thing that trips me out about what females do. The, the bad boys, the niggas, you would think the evil men would be the niggas that y'all would be setting y'all fangs up against. But it's usually what I've come to realize about females and female fuckery. It's actually the good guys that y'all, that y'all, uh... That y'all vilify and revile. Again, make that make sense. So you make the 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 vitriol that you have towards the good guy, the beta male, if you will. My only question is, why aren't you showing, giving that energy to actual bad, like the guys who actually are bad, the guys who would take advantage of a female situation where she's like I said out out on her ass hurting for money hurting for a place to stay hurting for food and this nigga who has all of it takes her in feeds her fucks her gives her some money I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna walk I'm gonna walk right past you Cause you, you ain't got nothing for me. I don't want that cooch. Especially no strad cooch. I mean, come on now. As horny as I am, I do have standards. And if the only thing, and I trust me, I would rather be, if I had to choose, if I have to choose between horniness and hunger, as far as uh what I'm suffering from, I'm going I'm going to choose horniness. I would rather be horny and stuck with internet porn any day than being down and out starving. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm just, <laughs> shit, I'm, I'm just going to have to get a flashlight, get some lube, get some Alexis Texas vids, <laughs> get some Kelly Divine vids, and go to work. Because that's what this is all about. It's about acquiring resources. That's what men do. This is a very hard life. And all it takes is one slip. All it takes is one miscalculated move for your ass to be out in the elements like where I'm at now. Where you ain't got no place to stay. Where you up here squatting in certain places and you got government officials and other people telling you to get the fuck out or we gonna arrest your ass 